Welcome to the Silver Eye Society podcast, the podcast where we're ready to fight about film, about meaning, about everything. Justin's in a in an angsty mood. I'll call you out. I'll call you out right in the intro. I don't have a problem with it. I'm not above turning this into a drama pod. So in this episode on Vivarium, this second part, we're going to talk about things like whether conformity is dehumanizing. It is. And we're going to talk about creepy children and mimicry. So why don't you jump right in, Justin, since you have antagonized me like the creepy child antagonizes their parents in Vivarium. Maybe you can shed some insight into this film. So apparently all I have to do is antagonize you in order to get you to do an introduction that is short enough to appeal to viewers' uh, sense of time and actually watch past the first five minutes for a podcast. Now, they always wait. They always struggle. And they always fast forward past your introduction in order to get to the word of the podcast because we all know the word of the podcast is the premier segment on the Silver Rice Society podcast. So let me give it to you now. The word is mimicry. An act of imitation in speech, manner, or appearance. 1680s. See mimic. Oh, this is not the right. This is not what I wanted. (laughs) The premier. Because I wanted the word mime. Is flawed (laughs) from the beginning. See what happens? Kids, ladies, gentlemen, non binary aliens in this episode. Don't talk shit unless you're ready to deliver yeah the word i wanted was mime and just for this first sentence it is uh, i thought it might be useful for you it's circus 1600 um That's from my for favorite me. my favorite <laughs> my favorite uh, creator of dictionary samuel johnson a buffoon who practices gesticulations I thought you might uh, find that definition useful in the future. A buffoon who practices <laughs> gesticulation. So I'm you know, anti-mime. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move away from uh, attacking yeah. you, though. Briefly, I would like to say the reason that there was some um, strife was because you have technological problems. And your technological problems cause problems for other people. Well, okay. And- we are a struggling artist podcast okay and that's what artists do they struggle and that's what i'm doing i'm putting in my dues with a 1000 year old laptop i do not live in luxury let it be known sometimes i do (laughs) look at you gesticulate (laughs) both of those words are so like you know biting buffoon samuel johnson's my favorite person in the entire world he knew how to write a diss track he would write. He did. He could. Buffoon still, you know, old as it is, still kind of hurts. Still kind of stings. Yeah. And just take you. All right. Enough of sure. this. The word of the podcast. It's finished. Move on to the. Yeah. Yeah. At, the, always just the, the best pod. The best part of the podcast. And yet we must rush out of it. Hmm. There's some interesting info there. Don't you think? What comes mimes, next? Mimes. What comes mimes. next? The people would like to know. Why don't you introduce the next segment that we're rushing into? Mimes frighten me. This I don't is know if mimes fright place for your therapy confessions. Okay. <laughs> this listen, <laughs> there's something disturbing about mimes. And it goes to one of the points here in our notes. And it goes to the, the concept of mimicry. Why, why is it? This is an ancient theme. And a modern... Listen, people think mimes are not a modern problem, but mimes are still a problem. <laughs> people think mimes are a problem of the past. Uh, uh, the, the, the mime population died out in the, in the 1800s, maybe the early 1900s. That's going to be you know, your political but platform. But the failure of the American circus. What I'm trying to tell us, what I'm trying to tell the viewers right now, mimes are still a problem. Now, they don't dress up. They don't, they, don't, they don't present themselves as mimes all the time. But I think we have a problem with mimes still, potentially. Oh, you could be what going do you somewhere think? deep there. Well, I think mimes 2024 
or no, sorry, that's the opposite. Um, mimes are still a problem. 2024 is the campaign that we can all join together behind. No, but not too, not too identically, because then we are also mimes, right? You gotta have a little, you gotta have a little diversity. This is why mimes are a problem. They're not diverse. They're the antithesis of diversity. Why aren't the mimes canceled? Why aren't they canceled? They have no capacity to be diverse. Isn't a mime like nothing but the ultimate manifestation of conformity? They have no you individuality. Don't know your enemy. Silence. I'm making a brilliant point. Mimes have no individuality. That's why they're disturbing. They're a void. They're a void. It's like a mirror. It's like a human mirror. And that's not right. That's that's concerning. There has to be individuality. And a mime is the absence, the deepest absence of individuality. And for that, we condemn them and they should be canceled. Would you like to hear would you like to hear about the ancient mimes of the Italian Greeks and Romans? They did dramatic performances, generally vulgar, with spoken lines consisting of farcical mimicry of real events and persons. So listen, maybe there is a place for mimes in our culture. What it is exactly, I'm not entirely sure. But there is something about, have you ever had someone uh, mimic you in order to uh, annoy you? My mom actually would do this to me and my sister when we were growing up sometimes. I shouldn't admit this on the podcast because someone's going to analyze this and be like, that's a deep abuse or something <laughs> like that. But she liked to sometimes like mimic us and do like a weird thing. And we just thought it was funny, but like also annoying. It would annoy us. I'm from a family of mimes. <laughs> yeah, <I'm sure. laughs> I have mime blood. What if I have, what if so mimes there's... are a race? What if mimes are a race of people? Calm down. Listen, um, there's, there's something about this and we're circling around it and we're trying to figure yes. out the problem with mimes. Now, is the problem with mimes that they show us, the mimes hold up the mirror that shows us how uh, pathetic we are? Or is there something deeper? There's something deeply disturbing about a mime and about mimicry. And I feel like I knew it once. I knew that I feel like I heard... Uh, uh, what's fucking uh, Jordan Peterson talking about mimicry and how, well, how no. there's something about it? M what? Jordan Peterson d didn't speak negatively about mimicry though, because mimicry, the problem here, ah, we're out of control here. We've ranted about the mimes and we've set forth the problem with mimes, but we need to back up just a bit here to give a little context to the Silver Eye Society listeners as they try to join us on this exploration of the problem with mimes um okay so we're get we're, we got here right okay so the child in this movie mimics the parents like really intensely to the point that he can uh replicate their voice um so that's just already creepy yeah that's not human um but there's also something deeper about just the mimicry itself that perturbs them so that's creepy we're gonna talk about the creepy child and then we'll also talk about conformity and the problem with that, why it's actually kind of dehumanizing. These are the things that we're going to talk about and they all kind of blend together. Now, there's a problem here that we need to differentiate between mimes and mimicry that is the natural uh, phase that children go through in trying to learn to be adults and trying to uh, mirror the habits of the human beings around them that's actually normal so and and it's healthy now there's something different right and it's not annoying it's mm -hmm. not annoying it's not. because children are shitty mimes they're not that good at it all children are essentially failed mimes they kind of struggle to do that i guess they struggle to figure out how to be an adult and it never works anyway clearly but um but it's not annoying because it's like oh yeah it would be really annoying if a small child perfectly emulated your behavior, say on this podcast. So if they, if he would, and some, it might kind of look like this. It might kind of be like, "Welcome to the Silver Eye Society." You do this thing with your arms a lot, so they they flow up and down, and you often wear these kind of cult. -like. Welcome to the Silver <laughs> Society. It's like this. 
It's like a it's like a, a, a cross between you know those uh, little balloon people in front of uh, car things that have the, the arms that do that. I knew you were gonna go there. <laughs> well, because you wear these uh, flow, your sleeves are flowing. It looks a, a bit like a cult leader crossed with the balloon person in front of the car dealership. So I'm just saying, imagine a child now. And yet we only get ma- like 200 views on our episodes. I, you would think that that would be the most compelling figure for podcasts like the advertising balloon and a cult leader what are we doing wrong i'm not sure (laughs) but feel free to point out in the comment section what we're doing wrong yeah bile have fun I'm sure people don't need any encouragement for that. I like. Look at I you! Like Look at what you just it. did I right like there. To do it, it's 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 fun. It is live. It is alive. Okay, I'm not I'm not paralyzed. Thank you, and I am grateful for that. And so I use my non-paralyzed body all the time. Why wouldn't I? Why would I sit like this? This is this is a fascist sentiment i think i think it's fascist i think it's fascist to be against you could do that you could actually make a great argument that being against like all this expressive type of gesturing is like white supremacy or whatever i'm sure it's already been done i'm probably late to the party of creating um useless rationalizations for my points after the fact that i adopt them but i do have a very i do have a very uh stolid stance I admit that. Yeah. I have one arm over here usually and I'm kind of And like the other this. one banging on the desk throughout the the podcast making that echoing metal sound that the viewers and listeners have so come to love, I'm sure. Why don't you go ahead and make it for them again so they know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Jail the mimes. <laughs> Bring the mimes. Bring the mimes to justice. Listen. I'm not anti mime. We're joking that around here. Sound- True. Well, listen. I mean, have, have you actually? Okay, let's just, let's get real for a second because yeah. we're all over the place. Have you actually been confronted by a real mime? No, I don't live in like 1600s French countryside. I don't even but know where they around. are. They're around. They're hiding. out there. <laughs> they're well, and they're good at it because they're quiet. That's true. Remember, uh, here's something. Mimes don't speak. It's the whole point of a mime. Well, no, oh, not no, necessarily. Not the, 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 yeah, it's not. Because the kid mimics in the movie. He speaks. Right. And that's annoying. I think partially the reason mimicry is so annoying is because we don't want to look in the mirror of ourselves. We don't like to have our ourselves uh, thrown back at us, right? It's like something kind of offensive because it's like, it's like when you hear a recording of your voice and, and you think, oh, geez, that's how I sound. I love my voice. Your voice is questionable, but here's the thing. But let's get to this point, which is an actual point instead of just railing my mind. Yeah, no, and it's it's kind of correct. But so if if someone can actually mimic you really well, it kind of says something about your originality. It kind of says something about your lack of individuality as a human. And it kind of says some, that's why I think it's such an affront. That's why I think mimes are such an affront to human dignity is that through their skill and look, know, know your enemy well, know the skills of your enemy, respect your enemy. If your enemy are mimes, you must come to the conclusion that they are skilled at what they do, right? Understand it and fight back. Yeah, yeah, do that, do that, um, and understand it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to give you what you need to fight against the mimes. I think that can be the rallying cry. I've been looking for a rallying, like a rallying cry that we can, you know, organize the Silver Eye Society members around. I don't know, I couldn't, I don't know what it is, and now I do. The problem is the mimes. It's a kind of a problem, though. But, like, it's different from the mimes. Leave the mimes alone. I don't know where they are. I've never seen a mime with my eyes. So this is not the problem They are to me. all around us. Mimes are the manifestation and or the symbol of conformity and anti-individuality. And that is something to rail against. And here's why. So I think that... I think that what is weird about mimicry in that way is that, yes, it reduces you down to almost like these kind of banal actions and traits. And and in a way, that's dehumanizing. 
because you think, well, I'm more than that. I'm more than just like the weird sound of my voice. And I'm more than just the way that I shoot my arms up in the air expressively. I'm more than that. Don't reduce me to these simple gestures. And then when they're, when they're thrown back at you, they seem ridiculous, right? There's, some, there's, a, there's a tinge of the ridiculous in seeing how someone else sees you. Mm, that's, that's part of it, right? Because then you're being forced to see yourself through someone else. And that's gross. Because for the most part, we already have enough trouble with ourselves. And then seeing ourselves through another person that's kind of like deconstructed us into these gestures and, and, and our phrases or tones of voice or whatever makes us feel like, like some kind of simple thing and some kind of ridiculous thing. So I think that's partly why mimicry is, can be... Um, can be dissettle like dissettling. It's not even a word. Unsettling. It should be a word. Dissettling. No one would have thought. If I just said dissettling, no one would have thought anything about it. Um, so yeah, mimicry, not so good. Don't do that. That's why it annoys people, right? It's always like a thing that kids would do to each other is to like mimic each other annoyingly like that. And it's it's annoying, which is funny because why? Why? But it is. It is. It, it's, I, I feel like I have childhood memories of of being mimicked and mimicking in a way meant to annoy, which is interesting because it's different then. But no, at the same time, it is kind of the same because that's, ch that's children doing that. That's children adopting mimicry as a way to try on different modes of being, but they're just doing it in a way that is also, that, that annoys the other person, which maybe that's the lesson, right? It's that, yeah, try that on, but you can't keep that. You can't, you can't just mimic everyone. You have to become yourself. You have to extract out whatever it is that you're learning by mimicking someone and then become an individual because if not, something's wrong with you. And that is actually what it is. And that's why the character in the movie that mimics that child that's actually not human is a problem because the mimicry that this character does is meant to learn how to put on the facade of a human there is no humanness behind the mimicry and that's why it's so kind of disturbing in some regard because it strips away all the humanity behind the gestures and and, and the the speech and turns it into like a dress a kind of dress that can be put on like this is a human and that's very dehumanizing because it's it's as if your actions and your words as, as a human are just something to be like, it, it's a study, right? That's what the character's doing. He's just studying them and then trying it on. I, I can't remember. There's one scene in the, in the film where, where he, he tries to like, it's either screaming or something like the, the mother is like, or the woman is very upset or something. And he mimics back that moment of being upset. And it's so devoid of the emotion it's just a replication. And there, there's so, that mimicry again. I have a question. There is, um, there are two, there are two potential types of mimes that I'd like to address. And then you can, you can uh, tell me what you think. So isn't there something about, don't answer this immediately. So first off, there's something about the, how should I say, when, the internet and social media creates templates for, for how to present yourself to the world. And by doing so, there's a type of enforced conformity by those recognized templates for doing that. Number two, isn't there something, maybe I'm grasping here in my mind, I don't, wanna, I don't want to lead a mime uh, an anti-mime witch hunt necessarily, but politicians, isn't there something about politicians where when you hear them speak, you know that they're, they're, it's almost like they're mimicking the language oftentimes of the past, mm -hmm. but they don't feel it that, you know, they don't actually believe it and you know, they don't feel it. And do you think we're at a point now where, for better or for worse, the types of politicians that will be more successful are the ones who 
who push away that type of um, mimicry of the past and just act like maybe not good people, but they act like an individual. Well, like an individual. I think we already saw that play out. That's Trump. I think it's possible we did. Yeah, that's exact. And I think that's one of the reasons he was so appealing uh, to people. Obviously, not everyone. But I think that's also why he was so unappealing to other people. I think that that actually had a very polarizing effect, which speaks to the fact that foregoing that kind of script that mimics the archetypal politician, some cultural invention that we have from the past, like this idea of, you know, uh, going on the campaign trail and saying like, how are you doing folks and whatever, like that kind of thing totally obliterated that totally an individual for better or for worse and so i think that you got that polarizing uh response because of that and so it was very appealing to some people and then it was very offensive to others and i think exactly because it foregoes that 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 idea of what a politician is it's either very offensive or very attractive in theory, you could have an individual who acts like an individual, but that doesn't uh, put off large swaths of the population, I guess. Maybe not, though. Maybe that's actually not possible because people judge individuals uh, differently. Some people like different types of people or whatever it is. So, so maybe that's the usefulness of the kind of costumery I don't know if that's a word or not. You're making up the lots costumery of words. that 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 politicians have to put on, but at the same time, their their mime act is not working anymore. Mm. Yeah, there's something about it that doesn't work anymore. Like it doesn't work on me. I don't think it works on anybody. When you hear politicians speaking into like reading, you know they're reading from a teleprompter, or you know they're just rehashing phrases that. It would take a lifetime of character and work to actually uh, believe in some of the phrases that politicians just put out. It's just words. You know that. And it's like, who are they even copying? Yeah, I think there's a kind of like, I, I genuinely think there's an idea of what a politician is supposed to be um, that that is what politicians generally try to fit into when they aim for that role. They try to have but this... But who made it? That's what I'm trying to get at. Who... Because it can't, obviously, over time and different cultures and different countries, it can't be the same thing. No, it's think. not, right? Because you have right. it so different. Like, you look at Russia and you have a very, like, strong man type of leader that does appeal to a significant portion of the Russian people. Like, there, it's not like everybody in Russia is against Putin. Maybe they are now, you know, whatever. But, um, but, but that's also like, could you imagine that kind of a character in American politics? Like, hunting and swimming and, like, sh uh, pictures with his shirt off and he's, like, doing exercises and whatever. It's a different kind of, like, cultures, I think, maybe have their own ideal or acceptance for what kind of what a leader looks like to them and i think that's also why trump was so offensive was because he broke that seriously for some people in an offensive way but also broke that in a positive way for people that were sick of that the script that we've had previously i don't know where that came from but it does seem like there is this archetype of the politician that harkens to like the the JFK era and like the 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 Roosevelt era like and I'm not sure what they have in common um though there is a kind of like um sense of not the working class cuz that's not real but it but there is a sense of like them being american you know like of the people um Somehow, I, I can't even put my finger on it exactly what it is, but, but I don't think it exists too. anymore either, though. I don't think it can it be It didn't done. exist then, but I understand why you would believe that. I mean, uh, Roosevelt was from the most elite family of New York. Uh, he was a patrician politician. 
I mean, that's what he was. JFK, again, from a family, granted, Irish at the time, not exactly yeah, but in the highest. Isn't Roosevelt like the one that like hunted bears or whatever? You're talking Theodore Roosevelt was, uh, Franklin, FDR Rose, Roosevelt was, had no, his legs were fucked from polio. He wasn't hunting anything as far as I know. Well, who's the so, one who was hunting bears? Theodore Roosevelt, his cousin, which was from the 1890s. He was president also. Yes, that guy was hunting, doing stuff, whatever. He was actually, he's kind of an interesting character. He had some mental issues, but he was an mm. interesting person. Beyond that, anyway, what I'm trying to get at is that, okay, so we have an American mold, suppose, supposedly, of what a politician is supposed to be, right? The problem is that in this year of 2022 and moving forward, we don't, here's where the real problem could be, is that we don't believe in that imagined form anymore. I don't think there's any consensus on what that would be. That means someone's going to have to either mimic that form so perfectly and well in order to give it some sort of power, or the mold is going to change or you're going to have a, a just a, a blatantly individual type leader, which will have a bunch of, which could be good or it could be bad. Um, but it doesn't see, I don't see it working anymore. Yeah, I think Biden is the last of that. I don't think people will, will tolerate that kind of like, ah, well, he looks like a politician and he smells like a politician, um, you know, option anymore. Because he has this kind of like, well, he's in politics. He was a, the vice president or whatever. He's been doing politics. He looks like a politician. He wears the suit. He gives the speeches. I mean, he did before. <laughs> Not so much anymore. But um, it's like such a, it's like bursting at the seams, like trying so hard to keep that, uh, that, that kind of cultural ideal of politician and leader together. And it's so clearly falling apart. I think he's like, it's a, hmm, dare I say, it's a punishment. I think it's a punishment for, for people that, you know, for, for a culture or whatever, whoever, that, that wants so desperately to go backwards and to believe that there's something, there's some way that we can have what we had once upon a time. And I don't think you get that anymore. And so you get this kind of like image, this like phantom of a leader and he's he's really like but at the same time like upon closer examination it's all holes it's all you know uh a, it seems like a facade at every time you examine it there's a deeper flaw so i think that there's like the only way forward is something different and that's the correct thing to do that's how it happens in in so much cultural change regardless of where that cultural change is being enacted you can't go backwards you can't just say like oh let's let's go backwards you know it's like the like the environmental movement or whatever it is or you you can't just you know start a co-op and oh hey that's how we'll solve you know all our environmental issues that's not it the solution is going to be something that hasn't been done that's why it's a solution you know i mean it can be stemmed from older knowledge and from things that happened in the past by all means that would be smart but i mean you can't just go back to the past to solve future problems for the most part, especially when the situation itself is so changed, you know, there, I, I don't believe. Okay. So I, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but I also don't believe that leaders of the executive branch really solve problems anyway. Th this is more about, no, he is the problem. The, th the, po the, the leader is the problem. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying like, he's going to solve our problem. I'm saying like our problem is, the 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 seemingly like the collapse of what we think a leader should look like yeah a mime has a purpose but when uh, i think okay I'll, I'll i'll coin a phrase right now i'll allow people to quote me the only thing worse than a mime is a half-ass mime if you're if you're gonna mime mime 100 percent but the problem is when you're miming the rhetoric of this kind of past idea of what a politician is supposed to be and you're failing at it for various reasons, 
then it seems we have a major problem. We got a major mime issue here. Yeah, well, we have a lot of um, major mime issues. And if you really wanted to get crazy with the idea of mimicry and mimery, you could consider how social media has a big role in the idea of like mimicry on a on a on a vast level and you already touched on that right like these kind of scripts i think you mentioned like um i don't even think you realize what you're talking about you you think i think you've touched on something that's far deeper actually cuz you don't spend that much time online you don't i don't think you know that the the left is more uh guilty of this and this is kind of like the activist thing, which is not new. This is old and it's actually more pernicious when you know where it comes from. But there's this creation of scripts for people and um, they, they put them out online as like, here's here's what you can say in this situation. Um, and it'll be like the, the most recent one I just saw. It's like embarrassingly ridiculous to even mention it. But it is a script for uh, checking ongoing consent. So you're fucking someone and you need to continually apparent, you know, according to certain people on the left, continually check that they consent. So there's a script for throughout the duration. It sounds so ridiculous that it has to be fake, but I know it's not. And it's the, the sentiment is still real throughout the sexual encounter. You are supposed to draw from this script that says, do you like that? Should I go slower? Should I do this? How are you feeling? Would you like a snack? Would you like a break? Blah, blah, blah. Like throughout the encounter, you can use this script to confirm that consent is still there. Okay, that's insane, number one. But also, and I don't understand why you even, to me, that's somewhere along the lines of like, that's the depths of the internet somehow. But also... I would also like to suggest to everybody that if they're ever following that script, that they imagine their partner as a mime. And then, <laughs> so there's a mime face. Yeah. And exactly. I've just I've just ch flipped the script. I think that's something, isn't like that, that uh, a phrase people use? It is a phrase. <laughs> I think I did. I don't like that. Now, listen, I'm going to let you go ahead and talk about that. Though. That's really disturbing. But what I actually meant is something d different and not weird like that. What I meant is that um, when I'm talking about the templates of social media, let, let me get down to something like almost biological about it. So selfies, right? That's a thing from what I understand. Now, most people are right-handed. So they're going to extend their right hand out to take a picture of themselves. And the majority of that, corresponding to how many people are right-handed, will always be within a certain template in physical space captured on, on film. Film is not the right word, but on the camera, okay? The, 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 the template, the way it's always going to look, is actually caught up and, and made concrete by the biology of the actor. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. And so interesting. there's all these limitations within how people are presented within social media that actually reduce down to these, these like the body, but also then the tools that can be used to do this. So obviously I don't pay attention to social media as much. I don't know all the stuff and all that. I certainly don't know this mime sex <laughs> cult you found. But um, that's what I'm kind of getting at is that there is baked in to the tools the social media platforms are constraints that create mobs of mimes. That's our next, uh, when we start our production company, Silver Eye Society Films, mobs of mimes will be the first horror film that we produce. Okay. It could be very frightening. Well, that sounds very frightening. Uh, mobs of mimes is a good way to describe Instagram also. That's kind of what's going on over there and there's a, there's some murmuring in the photography community because um conformity this kind of miming is really pernicious in in photography now because people want to recreate um the certain types of of photos and so you'll it's very interesting like there's been some some uh articles where they they gather 
all these photos that people take at certain places and they're all identical that people will have seen the photo at like you know some waterfall or whatever and they'll recreate that photo which hey fair enough if someone made a pretty photo and you think it's pretty and you want to take the same type of photo great but it's like there's so many of them and so the medium of photography in that case becomes one of like strangely of replication because people are all using it to just replicate the same style of photo as opposed to take you know a photo that is more individualistic of them in that moment however they decide to capture it they're trying to mimic um these photos at the place that precede theirs the mimes are everywhere do you understand what you just explained yeah it, it, they are mimes they are mimes they don't present themselves with the the classical mime uh visage of what well, how do you see a mime i see a mime as someone with a white makeup the black and uh, black and white stripes of the shirt they i don't may know be that's wearing a beret french. that's just yeah french. they may be wearing the a beret french are mimes this is why you cannot trust the french anyway de- deformity <laughs> conformity is dehumanizing let us discuss this is our the the topic that we'll sum up with here um in this movie you see conformity is an overt element in this horror world of suburbia it is an identical housing community all the houses are same all the yards are the same all the insides of the houses are the same and so um you what makes the place ominous and disorienting is the fact that it's all identical and what what got me thinking about the fact that oh wow confu- it's not just that like conformity sucks because you're forcing people to be something that they're not conformity is actually dehumanizing because it's not even of the natural world like that housing community that was m- identical to the point that it became a maze that was disorienting because they couldn't tell. They kept going in circles and arriving at the same place. It's the fact that it's perfectly identical that makes it disorienting. If there were things like, okay, there was a tree over here. Okay, this house is pink. Okay, this this part of the sidewalk was broken. They would have ways to, to uh, orient themselves in the world and then decide like, okay, we were already here. But it's the fact that it's identical that makes it such a, a, an ominous and disorienting place. And so that's interesting because it's like there's also the element of order, right? When you get to a certain level of order where everything is orderly, uniform, right? And so what is a uniform? Also, it's a uniform. Everybody's dressed the same. And you have that a lot in like like military situations where everyone is supposed to become this part of the whole soldiers all dress the same they march identically in order and part of that is to do what to dehumanize because in war in battle the individual is not important on the contrary it's more masses of bodies that you can throw at an enemy until one of you gives out so individuality is only reserved as a luxury for the highest ranking people in the military and so this this is an element throughout the film conformity as being something that's oppressive to them everything is the same every day is the same um and it's interesting also because the the alien character that presents them the house he tries to sell the house um but it's such a script and it's so devoid of meaning he says A living room. A room to live in. Memories will be made here. And it's like the most generalized, meaningless thing that you could say to everyone in every house. But it's supposed to sound like it's individualized. But here's, I just realized something. I I just came to two very important realizations. There have been a lot of realizations this podcast, (laughs) particularly about mimes. But the first one is that you know nothing about military history. Because you're describing an, like an army from World War One as opposed to modern militaries. Yes, That's I fun, was though. purposely I thinking about armies from... That was what I had in mind, so yeah. 
Great. Okay, then you're a genius. Number two, you know, that alien that you you just characterized as being saying these very uh, the, saying platitudes and devoid of of meaning, you realize that that alien got that from humans. So it's the human's fault. Like if what the if his words were copied, if we assume that that first alien's words were copied from another family, which it probably was, right? And he learned that phrase somewhere. Hmm. Now, what makes it disturbing is that the the he doesn't have any control over his like facial features and how to. He doesn't, there's a disconnect yeah, between the, no the words and the way he does it. But you just said the important part, which is that. There's no creativity to it. There's no, there's something lacking in terms of humanity. But it's also, we're subjected to this all the time. There's a kind in our of real world. Uh, so what I what I thought about it was like, and this is the same thing that you see throughout the, throughout the housing community. It's a kind of commodification of living, of the most essential aspects of life which is like where you live you're you know raising a child together going through the cycle of life till death it become and it's the body bag thing again that comes out in the in the film that it's it's already prepared for you your grave is already ready the body bag that you will be put in is already prepared so it's this kind of commodification almost a factory like treatment of something that to us seems precious to us we don't think that our life exists anywhere else and could ever be replaced even if it's a a life could be replaced not ours but this movie approaches that differently you know it takes that commodified lens and applies it to something that shouldn't that we feel is wrong to treat that way how do you get out of it How do we defeat the mimes? The mime, how do we defeat the mimes without the external mimes and the mime within? The mime within. Individuality. But how is that practiced? So here's the thing. Going back to the the, the, the concept of the selfie and the Instagram thing, right? Or whatever it is. So why is it? Here's something that's, and this may seem insane, and I'm just making this up as I go. But so I, I made this point that most people are right-handed, Okay. So therefore, most people will put the camera in the right hand and extend it outward to take a picture of themselves. But why is that's not the only option? As we've observed from your behavior and your ability to move your arms in many different angles and all around, why was it settled upon that this this roughly face uh, dis the, the 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 phone is like a right around your head? That why is that the template for it? Is it because whoever took the first selfie put it up and then everyone just started copying it? Or is it because of something that actually is effective and correct about mimicking that particular stance and attempt? I mean, obviously, you wouldn't want to take a selfie with the, the phone like right here in your face. That's something that I would do that would seem deserving of mockery and insanity. I understand that. But then maybe there is something useful to mimicry, right? Maybe the correct way to do a thing, like take a selfie, is found out somewhere along the way, and then that's copied forever. Well, also, that's that's what we said about, you know, mimicry and children. The ideal is that you try something that you observe on, you give it a shot yourself, and then through doing that, you understand whether this actually has use to it or whether it's just popular. That's also the important thing, right? Is that can you get past the stage of mimicry, which humans mimic? That's what we do. We also mimic each other in conversation. That's also kind of like a, 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 a type of body language thing, like that mirroring, mimicking patterns of speech. All of that is, is part of like pro-social behavior, <laughs> 
see it's not that's not pro-social though that's antagonistic so it's different you're the alien character trying to mimic me and my gestures and like stripping them of their humanity and throwing them back at me in an offensive way <laughs> but um i think that this is a theme that we're going to have to deal with many more episodes in the silver ice society which i'm sure is exciting viewers and listeners alike to tune in and to these future episodes about the danger of mimes yeah, well, we can put out... I think Instagram should start censoring mimes. Well, they can't do that. They'd have no no users left. The Mime Within is the book that I'm going to write. The Mime Within and how to combat that. But listen, I'm just saying that I think that it's an important point, so don't try to silence me yet. I'll wrap up here shortly. But the thing is, like, it's not wrong to mimic at first. You have to do that to figure out what works to figure out if what people are doing actually works or if it's just popular. But then from there, there needs to be a next step where you're willing to change slightly what you've mimicked, to adjust what you've mimicked to your own standards, to experiment with it. That's when you actually become an individual without being like just completely, you know, uh, uh, separated from all of humanity. It's not wrong necessarily to mimic, but I think it's helpful to kind of like always keep the lens of, and now how can I change this of my own effort? Like, what can I add to this and make it my own thing? Whether that's taking selfies or, you know, creating art, your actual work or something like that. That's, and your, your, your life, you know, your life. This is the thing that gets me really weird about like the mimicry in politics and like the accepting of scripts and the language, like the weird thing of like adopting the type of language that is used within a political subculture. It's a very anti-individual um, environment, that kind of like mimicry where everybody has to speak about the same things in the same way. That's when you know you're in an environment that doesn't value individuality. And, and I think that that's, that's not where, how we're getting out of the vivarium or the cube. You know, you need to be able to bring your individual strength to bear. And if those are rejected, then you know that you're in the vivarium. So first off and finally, I think that I'm still more anti-mime than you. You seem to be, you seem to accept some uh, utility to mimicry. And I'm more of like, I'm more of a anti-mime extremist. But we'll leave that for another episode. Uh, secondly, and absolutely finally, this haunts my nightmares this thing that you talk about sex scripts on twitter or whatever because and let me, let's let's bring this together with another point you make you say that there is some usefulness for uh children to mimic things in order to basically behave correctly well if people are putting out scripts for all types of different types of uh behavior then they assume the people that need them are children. Yes, that's correct. That's actually correct. How can anyone tolerate that within themselves? How could anyone tolerate that? Because a lot of people still are children. I think that that's like the desire to be told how to act. And there's something in that that is a release from the burden of having to go your own individual way. If you can just accept a script, how easy that's i still believe and maybe i'm i believe that if confronted with someone like that doing something like that and we'll we'll take it outside of the weird twitter sex script i mean cuz i'm sure there are scripts for other things too oh, yeah, right there are. give me another everything um there's there's a <laughs> one of the scripts got like mocked uh, across the internet because it was some like therapy jargon um that's become basically like a running joke um, someone had said something like, um, you don't have to be available for everything that your friends need. It's okay to make a boundary or whatever. And like the sentiment isn't entirely wrong, but what's weird is the providing of a script 
for doing that, as if people cannot navigate their own personal relationships. And the script was something akin to, hello, thanks for reaching out. I'm currently at capacity and unable to deal with your problems or whatever, but I'd be happy to discuss this at another time. And it's like, is, am I going to talk to my friends like a telemarketer? Like I'm their but secretary? this is what I'm getting at. Exactly. So, so the people... This is where I wonder if anything is real. Like, is anyone actually doing that? Because if they are, God help they us. are mimes. Well, there's a degree to which we could ask whether um, there's a kind of like level of individuation, right? Where if you don't reach a certain level of growth as a human being, you simply remain mostly a mime. And... Um, that's kind of like you're in peasant world, right? You have not forged an individual identity. You merely glob on to whatever feels that it provides you security and acceptance in the time. Your self is, you know, suppressed merely so you can fit in to whatever group is convenient at the time. So maybe there is an element to which humans are mimes, purely mimes. And the goal is to transcend mime world become an individual not a mime that's scary that that's more frightening to me in this horror movie and all that i i want to know i want to know if people actually do that i want to know I and i want to know what kind of people do it because it sounds like like i understand maybe there's something no rejected <laughs> no more half measures anyone who does that they seem it seems like maybe they're mentally retarded. That's what it's... Because you yeah. would take some... Like, I could understand if someone's mentally retarded yes. and you need to help them through life situations. Yes. And say, here's a life situation, here's something... That I actually totally am fine with and okay with. Well, that's the conspiracy that theory sense. that I have, is that actually these scripts are for people that have serious social deficits. But they... But there's something about, like, the neo-left or whatever that has... Seem, seems to be attracting people with social deficits or at least there's something about a culture that is socially inept that can then be easily manipulated into something new think about it if you wanted to you know deconstruct and and restructure a culture what would be the best army to work with? People that don't have any strong sense of their own, you know, of, of a social world. Like they're, they need scripts. That's a dream for anyone that's trying to kind of like enact, you know, some type of ideology or system or culture, or whatever it is, is people that don't have that already, that need to rely on someone else to provide them instruction in navigating the social world. It's, it, I mean, that's that. So yes, I don't know. The scripts really, they make sense for people that have social uh, issues, like problems that prevent them from, you know, picking up on social cues and what to do. Like that's actually something that's done in therapy for people with like severe autism or Asperger's or things like that. They teach them in this situation, this is what we say. You say, please. And like when someone asks your name, they want to know your name, not the name of your, your dog or whatever. Like that's real. So those scripts, yeah, and that's fine. I understand that. You know, that seems that seems the weird. Thing I can is even that understand the the utility of it because uh, absolutely, you. I was uh, I was trying to do some extremely important work on mime research a few days ago, and you were text messaging me about something that was totally unimportant. And I asked you. I unfortunately didn't have a script, and so I had to ask you how I could silence you on the text messages, and because I didn't know how to, and so I can understand the the pitfalls, the traps, the uh, issues for people who may not have uh, extremely great social. Uh, or technical skills. So you could just or technical silence skills. your phone. Maybe you don't need a script. You need a user manual. All right. Thank you. <laughs> well, maybe for you need a user manual for your fucking computer so we could actually start the second episode instead of me sitting around for an hour. Like this well, basically, though, I'll tell you what. Well, your, your, your rage inducing. 
I will talk over you. Your rage-inducing mechanics before this episode actually has led us to a breakthrough, I think, and a sub-theme moving forward, which is how do we defeat the mimes? The Silver Eye Society is, is coming upon soon to be a one-year anniversary, a time for us all to gather around in the Silver Eye Society, to gather around the digital campfire, to, to continue our struggle, but to sharpen our struggle, to figure out what it is, what is the enemy, what is the ally, what is the script, what is the non-script, what do we do? And I think what we have done is we have stumbled upon a very, very key point to our platform I think the Silver Rights Society's platform, one plank of that platform might be an anti-mime plank. I rest my case. I want an anti-mime social media network. Anybody that's miming immediately gets banned. All right. Um, mime this, listeners. I love the Silver Eye Society. I am going to like and subscribe to the Silver Eye Society. I may, I will become a patron of the Silver Eye Society because in doing so, I will access extra episodes every month. I will have access to full length AMAs. I will be able to send my burning questions about how to release myself from the cage that is my human mime mind. Okay. Great. Thank you for miming along. Excellent. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>